What's up, YouTube? So today I'm going to make a lightning strike video, and we're going to talk about my character and the upgrades I could potentially make. And I do know a lot of people have trouble with their current lightning strike character where they don't know why they're dying so much, and maybe they don't know how to get more damage. So I'm going to go over all the ways you can do that just to help you out. But basically, the character is a pretty much a powerhouse now. I've done a lot of simulacrums on the character. And when your character becomes at the point where you can do the Simulacrum's Deathless and you can actually level, then it's pretty good overall. Like the main reason why I like Simulacrum is because it's a pretty good barometer for how good your character is in terms of damage and survivability and being able to handle all mods. So currently I'm almost 99 and I will probably try to get this character to 100. You might see that my belt slot is missing. It got stolen. Well, not really. It's actually someone's helping me enchant it because I'm trying to get elusive 20% ailment avoidance, which should actually help out a lot. But basically, what's my current character like? So this current character, I upgraded quite a few pieces, and the character is now pretty confident and comfortably able to do simulacrums. A lot of people ask me how much damage you actually need, and I think the answer is probably around 20 to 30 mil. 20 to 30 mil to do it like really really fast so that you don't really need to worry about any mods at all 20 mil is probably good enough and that's if you want to farm it fully to wave 30 and finish it within like 25 to 30 minutes which should be pretty pretty good right but basically it's all about the power of incremental upgrades every single time you get an upgrade you're able to slowly get more and more damage and it really really adds up so for instance, this character here, this is the gear I am wearing. I bought this watch aside, which is precision anger multi. And just this watch aside alone is, how much damage is that? This watch aside alone is 20% damage. And then you can also get Mark of the Elder Ring. You don't have Mark of the Elder Ring. It is a 22% damage upgrade compared to a empty slot. So just getting all these upgrades is a huge, huge change. A lot of people also don't upgrade their gems. Like I also bought Awakened Multi-Strike. And compared to normal multi-strike, this is a 10% damage upgrade downgrade, right? Compared to Awakened Multi-Strike. So once you start adding all of these upgrades up, this is how you get numbers that are so high. A lot of people honestly don't understand how is someone able to have 100 million damage when your gear doesn't seem to be that much better. But it really is about everything adding up. And Berserker, of course, has this more multiplier here that scales your attack speed, it steals your attack damage, movement speed, and attack speed with Berserk. And it also gives you more damage straight up from Aspect to Carnage. Now, something that really helped me out was getting these Forbidden Jewels. Now, I do know a lot of people have been asking what Forbidden Flesh and Flame Jewels you should get. Well, the answer, definitively, I can say is Blitz. So the reason you choose Blitz versus Rite of Ruins, and they're both theoretically the same thing, so you're pretty much considering whether you want to swap out Flawless Savagery versus Crave to Slaughter. And it's a pretty good question, which one is better? So Flawless Savagery gives you multi and crit chance, and it gives you fizz damage. The fizz damage is not the worst thing in the world. It gives you a tiny amount of conversion, which converts it over to lightning. But it gives you crit chance, which a lot of times you don't need because you're already capped out on crit for a multi or for brittle. And it gives you 25% multi, which is a tiny amount compared to how much multi you already have. But this note over here, Crave to Slaughter, it gives you 10 maximum rage and you gain one rage on hit with attacks, no more than once every 0.3 seconds. What this means is that this allows you to pretty much regenerate rage because you're attacking so fast. So you can pretty much think of it as you're getting three rage back every one second. And the main thing is you get 10 maximum rage. So that means when you war cry with Warbringer and you have maximum power, you're able to get 60 rage. And having the rage go up to 60 and degen down from instead of 50 helps out a lot in maintaining the Berserk. So this is a huge difference. Even though it might not seem like a big difference in POB, the actual gameplay loop of being able to keep up your Berserk for like 70 to 80% of the time it's huge and an enormous damage boost. So if you can see here, if we don't have Berserk up, and let's see, Berserk, we lose 66% of our damage. So even though this node might not show up in Pob as a lot more damage, it is a drastic change. So that's why you should always take the Blitz Forbidden Flame and Flesh so you can path through Crave to Slaughter instead of pathing through Flawless Savagery. 
Now, stun immunity is definitely mandatory. I was kind of struggling in simulacrums a little bit, and I do think stun immunity is huge in helping you survive. And it's also huge in mapping. A lot of times, the maps are really juiced that you could get chain stun, even though you have the Pantheon. So the way you can get stun immunity is you pretty much just get it on your unique jewels, or you can try to get some harvest enchant. I think it gives you 10% chance to avoid stun. So you have Forbidden Flame, Forbidden Flesh. So Inspired Learner, you can get a chance to avoid being stunned. Mantra of Flames, a chance to avoid being stunned. And I actually ended up pathing through here for Heart of Oak 20 and an 8% chance to avoid being stunned. And right here, you could technically take 20% chance to avoid being stunned. So there's a lot of different options to get stun immunity, and it does help out a lot, both in surviving in maps and in simulacrum. Now the character's current damage is like 50 to 60 mil. The way you calculate that is you look at your melee hit, which is 28, and you add it with the projectile. The actual burst could be a lot higher because it doesn't account for vol lightning strike and all of the beams that shoot out, which is a significant chunk of your damage. Now, what future upgrades can I actually make for the character? Well, the character is pretty good. So let me go over the gear real fast that I have on my guy. So this claw, not too great. I actually have a crafted cold damage roll. It's actually terrible. I pretty much made this claw with like essence combined. And this helm is pretty good. It has life, it has chaos res, it has spell suppression, it has T2 dex. And it also has some plus two melee strike range which is not exactly the best. Plus two melee strike range does not really help out because that means we have to stand further away from the boss in order to double hit. Now this Omni, can't really get another slot that's better than this. I am running Ashes, Frost, and Storm enchant or anointment because I want increased effect of non-damaging ailments which affects Brittle. The shield, pretty much you want a max res on top instead of the Lightning and Chaos res. The Ring Mark of the Elder is best in slot. You can't really beat it. Brass Dome, not really replaceable because it's just too good. Amethyst ring here, I would want to get a T1 accuracy roll instead of 208. And ideally, I probably want to exalt this. Another way you can make this ring is you can do suffixes cannot be changed, reforge attack until you get T1 elemental damage of some sort, or reforge lightning, and then you do an Ashling gamble and you try to hit off the suffixes cannot be changed. And then you craft on non channeling skills as your last step of crafting. Now boots, I kind of want to get a Tailwind pair of boots, but this pair of boots is pretty good. It's triple T1 suffixes, and I made this with so suffixes cannot be changed. Veiled Chaos Orb, ended up getting the movement speed and Onslaught. And it's pretty important to get Onslaught on kill as there's no other source of Onslaught on this build. After dropping the Perseverance, and it has some T1 rarity, right? That's probably why I found so many Mage Bloods so far. And lastly, I crafted on Life. Belt's always going to be Mage Blood slot, pretty much unbeatable until they change Head on their back to how it was. And this Hydra Skill Gauntlet, not exactly the best base, uh, but I pretty much had to craft on this base because it was Strike Additional too, and I have Spell Suppression in order to get me to 100% Spell Suppression. And I crafted this with Essences of Zeal, so 16% attacks or T1 attack speed, Life, Strength, Dex. So pretty much I got the suffixes with Strength, Dex, Attack Speed, I slapped on Eldritch Chaos Orbs until I got a T1 Cold Roll, and then I decided to Eldritch Exalt it, and I somehow got T1 Hybrid Life Roll. So overall, this pair of gloves is extremely, extremely good, so not really sure if I'm going to be able to replace that. Now, as I said, you want to get Belt Enchant eventually for Elusive Ailment Immunity. Another good Belt Enchant I could potentially get is enemies withered by you has minus six percent all res which actually helps out a lot so you can see here these are just like some sample boots that i could potentially have effective tailwind ailment effect onslaught uh, increased attack cast and boost speed so this pair of boots will probably be perfect for me outside of the elusive because elusive is actually useless as we get elusive from nightblade now this claw here is actually a perfect claw for the build so you have triple t1 prefixes and not just triple t1 essences because the T1 actual rolls are higher than the essence rolls. Then you have 27% attack speed, crit chance, and a chance to deal double damage. Ideally, you probably want crit multi. And you can get uh, essence attack speed if you actually use a double fracture prefix claw. But these are pretty much just some very long-term goals in terms of min-maxing. But now let's get into how you can fix your character and not just mine. So a lot of people ask me like, oh, I just don't do enough damage. And it is a pretty common thing that people have. So number one is a lot of people are using Gale Sight. 
or secrets of suffering, but I find some people don't have enough brittle to get enough effectiveness on bosses. So the reason behind that is you don't have enough cold damage. So you want to try to maybe run added cold damage in your links. I do think that these are probably going to be the best links for now. I know I had different links in the previous League Star video, but these are the links I'm going with for now. So you can see here, you want to look here at cold damage and see how high it is. It should be a pretty significant chunk of your damage in order for your brittle to work because you need cold damage to proc the cold ailment. And if you don't have enough cold damage, a way to cheat the system is to take nodes like this, increase the effect of non-damaging ailments, which pretty much makes it count as you dealing double damage for the ailment calculation. There's these nodes over here, two 10%. There's the elemental mastery for 40% increased effect. And you can also choose to anoint this like me, which gives you 30% increased effect. You want to make sure Trinity is working. So the reason you can find out if Trinity is working is all, all three sides are lit up on the top left. Now, if you want to see what's wrong with it, is you have to see if you have two elements that can alternate between the highest damage. So you can see here, clearly, cold and fire can both take turns being the highest damage roll. Now, if you want to see if you have Trinity and one side is not lit up, the side that is not lit up is the side that is dealing too much damage. So if the fire side is not lit up, that means your fire's damage portion is way too high. Another thing is you want to prioritize a high attack speed claw. Uh, attack speed is everything. This claw is actually not that good, and I forgot to put a harvest enchant on it still. But ideally, you want a 2 plus attack speed claw because it scales all of your base damage. Mark of the Elder is another ring that's super, super efficient. As you can see here, this ring is a 20% damage increase, and that's extremely powerful for the ring slot, and it's actually a pretty cost efficient upgrade. But this does mean that your other ring needs to be a Shaper ring. Uh, you can even craft on a Shaper Elder base to get some sort of stun immunity from attacks. Now, lastly, one thing is that people really always ask me, how do I actually afford an Omni on this build? I'm too poor. Instead of saving for the Amulet, the best thing is to buy these incremental upgrades. And if you really want an Omni dead, then you can sell off the incremental upgrades and buy it up full out right but you want to buy items that will probably stay around the same in price so interrogation will stay around the same in price these large clusters will stay around the same in price claws will usually depreciate a little bit rings are probably going to stay around the same in price strike gloves will stay around the same blizzard crown is going to be pretty similar six link brass dome you can always sell back so that's pretty much the best way of doing it like you can save for omni but if you don't buy any upgrades along the way you're actually going to end up farming slower than if you had bought some upgrades and lastly, here, the large cluster is extremely, extremely good in damage. So you can see here, Feed the Fury, Fuel the Fight, Martial Prowess. But most importantly, it actually allows you to get two extra jewel sockets, which allows you to one day put in the Forbidden Flame and Flesh Jewels. If you look here, if you take out this cluster, you lose roughly 46% of your damage. So you can see here, clusters are an extremely powerful thing to scale your damage. Like if you put those points on the tree, there is no way you're actually getting 46% increased damage. Now, a lot of people also have this problem where your character is too squishy. And this is something that goes for a lot of characters, not just Lightning Strike Berserker. But this character, you need to have around 4 to 4.5k life at bare minimum. A lot of people told me they're wearing Brass Dome and they actually have 3k life. It doesn't really matter how good your actual defenses are with like armor, evasion, spell suppression max res if you have no base hp for those defenses so you need base hp you can't be running around with under 4k life and expect to live in high tier maps now another thing is also positive chaos res a lot of people's chaos res is in the negatives and there are a lot of arch nemesis mods that do chaos damage there's even alters that give you extra physics chaos and there's also toxic that drops chaos balls on top of your head and it's just a really really important thing and if you're running any beyond maps there's a lot of chaos dj and stuff like that so make sure that you have at least some positive chaos res and not negative 60. now a lot of people don't run grace grace is a huge thing and that it gives you a lot of layered defenses so this evasion gets added on top of our block and our night blade elusive effect and elusive gives you a chance to avoid all damage and if you don't run Grace, you're pretty much, in a lot of cases, taking like 60% more damage when there's a lot of little hits, a lot of attack hits, and that's how a lot of people die. Grace is very, very important. If you're running Perseverance early game, it helps you out with survivability and damage.
Now, capping spell suppression is another huge thing. A lot of people end up with 20 to 30% spell suppression, just call it a day or 40%. But you should prioritize getting to 100% as much as possible. Without 100% spell suppression, you're probably going to get one shot a lot. You're going to be like, what just happened? Spell suppression is useless. And it's really an all or nothing stat, it, or it's not all or nothing, but getting 100% will make your character feel infinitely tankier, so try to prioritize it as much as possible. If you're not using a brass dome, it should be relatively easy as you can get 30% on your chest. Now, you can do all these things to fix your defenses, but in the end, there are a lot of DJs in this game, and you just have to be careful about it, and you're kind of hard to build around besides just being very vigilant. But you can't really blame people for dying to DJs as Cold Snap is really hard to see, especially if you're doing any Delirium maps. The Fire Trap or Burning Ground is hard to see. So just be pretty wary about where you're standing. And you can also die to Bleed, so make sure that you immediately dispel the Bleed with either a Bleed Immunity Flask of some sorts. Because DJs are probably the most dangerous thing for the build. And since we don't have any damage over time reduction, we're pretty much taking the full amount and it's really, really dangerous. But overall, I hope this video has helped you out troubleshooting your character, knowing what's actually wrong with it and how to upgrade your tankiness and damage. And maybe see my character and what I've done to change it up and help you out with one day min-maxing your character fully. Now, the main thing about this build I like is that the upgrades do feel very satisfying at all levels. Every single time you get an item, you can feel the damage increase. You can see that, oh, wait, my damage increased by 5 to 10% in POB. And the damage increases don't really stop in the sense that you can always keep getting better and better gear rather than like a build that's not crit where it feels pretty capped out pretty early on. And your character really do need to have satisfactory defenses in every level. You can't just have a bunch of armor and no evasion. You can't just have a bunch of chaos res but you're not capped on LE res. So everything needs to work in conjunction or you're pretty much just going to die. You can't have... 60% spell suppression expect to stay alive every single time as you're eventually you're going to get hit by a spell and you're not going to suppress it now i do apologize if anyone feels like they got baited by the league starter a little bit i honestly got baited myself based on how much the price of omni was and omni is a pretty big item as you can see here if you take off the omni the bill literally loses half its damage or more but in the end, even with half of the damage on the Berserker build, it should still be able to do all content and allow you to farm the Omni, especially if you follow one of those Alk and Go Sentinel strats in City Square. But never did I expect Omni to be that much. However, on the bright side, I think they did change the drop rate for Omni as there's a lot more of them online or it's just a weekend. And this is proven also by people in Hardcore finding more Omni showing up finally on trade, on Hardcore trade. So who knows, maybe they fixed the Omni drop rate and the price will go back down to normal levels as there is actually a healthy supply of them. But thanks for watching everyone. I hope everyone gets their Omni or whatever build they're working on up and running. I hope you find more beers, exalts, and base blessed than me. And see you next time. Bye.